Hey friends, Ash here with Gin Sense. Hope that you guys are doing well. So the other day I placed an order for a whole bunch of clone fragrances, ones that I had never smelled, actually hadn't heard anything about. I was just looking through fragrance net and I was adding ones to the cart that caught my eye basically. And one of those fragrances is the one that we're gonna be talking about here today. It's from Our Moth. It's called Radical or Radical Brown. I can't decide if the name is awesome or absolutely horrible. Part of me wants to think that it's awesome because when I hear Radical, it makes me think of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the other part of my brain says, no man, calling a fragrance Radical is just terrible, so stupid. But it's our moth. And uh, I actually don't have to say anything else other than that, it's our moth. You see some of their names, you see some of the presentations, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm gonna break down Radical Brown and let you guys know what I think about it, let you know whether or not you should check it out, let you know whether it's one of uh, our moth's best offerings or not, and a little hint, it is, a little pro tip. So let's jump into it, let's check the presentation out, and let's break down Radical Brown. Also guys, wanna let you know that I have a new secondary channel called Extra Gents Sense. I've got a link in the description. Go ahead and check that channel out. I'm gonna be doing more standalone reviews on that channel. Niche fragrances, lesser known designers, uh, indie fragrances, stuff like that. Because there's been a bunch of niche stuff, indie stuff, and designer stuff that I've wanted to cover on the channel. And I don't want to just spam you guys with like two videos a day, three videos a day, stuff like that. So I open up the secondary channel where I can put out more content on fragrances that are maybe not as in demand by the masses. I'll say that much. So again, link in the description, extra gents sense all right radical brown let's kick it off with the presentation which actually all things considered for our moth is a pretty good one i like this one legitimately it's got its quirks but you know compared to some of the other stuff that they put out it actually looks handsome so here we got the box on the front you can see there are moth radical eau de parfum concentration 100 mil size interesting design going on there on the side you'll see a fake snakeskin motif, and that carries over to the bottle. It's kind of weird, but whatever. On the back, you have the ingredient information and your batch code. This bottle that I have expires 02-2024. Then you take the top off the box and the bottle sits down inside there. And that's just plastic with kind of a felt covering over the top of it. And here we got the bottle. All things considered, it actually feels really good in the hand. It's got a nice heft to it, nice and heavy. It's got plastic sitting over top of glass on the front there. Name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration once again. On the side, you'll see that snakeskin motif once again, and that's just a, a sticker, so. No worries, not actual snake skin. The cap does click into place. And on the bottom, you'll have a sticker. On the back, you will have your batch code. Let me blast out a couple sprays for you guys here so you can see how the atomizer works. It doesn't feel great. The atomizer itself kind of wobbles around when you put your finger on it. It doesn't feel very sturdy. It feels pretty cheap. Atomizer is so-so. The atomizer is the worst part of the presentation for sure. As I alluded to at the beginning of the video, for me, Radical Brown is one of the best fragrances that Armoff has out, or at least one of the best fragrances from Armoff that I have smelled. So it was kind of a surprise to me that I hadn't actually heard about the fragrance before. Now, to be fair, like I've said before on the channel, I don't really follow super closely what all these clone brands are doing, what our moth is doing, Harame and all this stuff. I just see a fragrance pop up and I go, oh, I guess they, they did something new. Okay, let's check it out. Even though this is not technically new, I'm just talking about when I come across them on a discounter or something. So this is really, really nice. And it reminds me of actually a number of different fragrances, some of them more closely than others. So the fragrance this is gonna be compared to the most is Parfums de Marly Herod, but it's not exactly a one-to-one -one of Parfums de Marly Herod. It's almost like a, a mixture of sorts. It's a bit like you took the cinnamon, the tobacco, those facets from Herod and you melded it together with a little bit, a little bit 
of Loam Ideal Eau de Parfum. It has kind of a, a cherry feeling to the fragrance when you first spray it on, talking about radical brown, but it's not, not as clear cut a cherry note as you're gonna find in Loam Ideal Eau de Parfum, but it's, it's, it's similar, it's in that style. So when you first spray our Moth Radical Brown on, it hits you with this almost syrupy, fruity, sweet, cherry-like note. So a cherry-like fruitiness that does have a syrupy sweetness to it, but it's very pleasant, it smells really good. And you may be worrying about our Moth fragrances having like a big alcohol blast in the opening or having this very grating, chemically kind of scent profile. Thankfully, Radical Brown doesn't have that. It does have a ton of sweetness, a butt ton of sweetness in the opening, but it doesn't have too much of that chemical funk, thankfully. You got a bit of cinnamon in there that mixes together with that fruity sweetness in the opening. Smells great. There's also tobacco leaf, there's incense underneath everything, but not too much smoke initially. Initially, it's more so about that spiciness and that sweetness. As it dries down, it starts to smell very vanilla-like. Actually, when my wife smelled this fragrance, the first thing that popped into her mind was this bad boy. Blast from the past, well, uh, the more recent past, but still a blast from the past. Perry Ellis Black Vanilla Absolute, part of their Oud line, which was a big hype beast at one point. You could find this for about $30, and it is all about the vanilla. This fragrance, Radical Brown, reminded her a little bit of that. I definitely get where she's coming from. To me, it doesn't smell, you know, one-to-one -one like the Perry Ellis, or even close enough to say, you know, get the Radical Brown if you miss the Perry Ellis. But that vanilla-like warmth and sweetness, along with that spice and that ambery undertone that you're gonna get from Radical Brown, I can see it being compared, uh, you know, in the, in the same, style of a Perry Ellis Black Vanilla Absolute. So one of the focal points of Radical Brown, of course, with it being compared to Herod, is going to be tobacco. And the tobacco here does smell very good. It's gonna be more of that sweet pipe tobacco where you have maybe a little more ramped up sweetness in Radical Brown to where you would call this like a Parfums de Marley Herod clone with a twist instead of just a straight up Herod clone. Now, Radical Brown having that similarity to Herod, but with a change and a twist and a this and a that, that by itself is awesome. But it actually has a stronger similarity to a different fragrance completely aside from Herod. And that fragrance is now discontinued and pretty hard to find. It's from Bulgari. It's Bulgari Man Black Orient. Yeah, when I first smelled Radical Brown, my mind went straight to Herod. That's where it went and it stayed there for the most part. But then after a couple wearings, I thought to myself, wait, 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 wait. I've smelled this before, something like this. And it was one of those deals, one of those very frustrating deals where you know you've smelled something, but you don't know what it is until you finally stumble upon it. And then you go, that's it. That was the fragrance. And it is this one. Black Orient. I think Radical Brown actually is closer in a one-to-one -one with Black Orient than it is Herod. But it's still not exactly the same as Black Orient either, so I guess it's not exactly a one-to-one -one of that either. It's just its own little thing, this kind of amalgamation of other fragrances put into a blender. A bunch of things that you recognize in Radical Brown from other fragrances put into one scent but it's definitely, to my nose, closer to Black Orient if you're just saying straight up, that fragrance is the one that is the absolute closest to. Black Orient, though, does have more booziness to it, and it has that leathery feel, which doesn't really come across in Radical Brown. But if you're one of those people who's been looking for an alternative to Black Orient, one of Bulgari's best fragrances, unfortunately hard to find, as I said before, then Radical Brown, could be your best bet. Sometimes I wish Armoff would do more stuff like this. Radical Brown is obviously inspired by other fragrances. It's riffing on other fragrances. It's taking things from other fragrances, but the scent itself is not directly just one other fragrance. You could also, if you kind of stretch it a little bit, you know, stretch your imagination a little bit, compare Radical Brown to this one, Pure Havan from Terry Mugler, which is one of, if not the best men's fragrances released from the house. 
The quality of Radical Brown is surprisingly really, really good, considering it doesn't cost all that much. From FragranceNet, I paid, I believe it was just under $35, and that's for this full presentation 100 ml size bottle. A lot of times when you smell clone fragrances that are trying to clone a tobacco scent, they just aren't quite there. When you're talking about the cheaper clones, Probably the best one outside of this, if we're talking inexpensive uh, niche tobacco clones, would be Insurrection 2 Wild from Ray and Tradition, which more closely emulates Pure Havan from Mugler than it does Herod. That's a really nice fragrance for the price, very good, and it is cheaper than Radical Brown, but off my skin, compared one to one, the Armoff smells much higher quality. Radical Brown also pushes out a little bit more, lasts longer, so the performance is better. I think overall presentation-wise, you know, half and half, the Insurrection 2 Wild bottle looks really nice, which I'll just grab it. I'm back. So here it is, uh, Insurrection 2 Wild. It looks nice, I think it looks fine, but I actually find myself partial to this one. Yeah, I, I didn't think I would see the day that an arm off presentation because they're usually gaudy and horrifically ugly would be my preference over the uh, Insurrection 2 bottles because these look great, but I prefer this one. I think it's nicer. Kind of got lost on a tangent there, but yeah, some of the cheap tobacco clone fragrances that I've smelled just don't do it for me. They have this screechiness to them. They smell very synthetic. The notes don't come across like they're blended well. You can tell that the quality of the ingredients is not there. They smell like what they are, cheap imitations of something else. And when you're going for a clone fragrance, you're not really looking for a cheap imitation of something else. You don't want it to come across cheap. You want it to come across pricey. That's the whole reason that you got the fragrance. You want it to smell like this high-end fragrance. You just don't want to pay the high-end price. You don't want a fragrance that smells like a $20 version of a $200 fragrance. You want a $20 fragrance that smells like a $200 fragrance. You get what I'm saying? And Radical Brown actually pulls it off. It is better than I expected. I like it a lot. Now I talked really briefly about performance in comparison to Insurrection 2 Wild. Uh, let's dive into that a little bit more here. So longevity wise, Radical Brown off my skin, I get about seven hours, maybe a little bit more. So that's good. Projection wise, it's more in the average range, maybe slightly leaning toward above average, but I would say average overall. Maybe you'd get better performance than me, but I don't have anything to complain about. I don't think it's a weak performer or anything like that. Season wise, gonna be more of a fall winter time fragrance. I think you can wear it during the day or the evening, either one, but obviously with this being a sweet, spicy tobacco scent, it's gonna be better suited for cool weather, we'll say. Now, to be fair, I have not been able to wear this yet in cool weather, because I did just get this in and we're heading straight into summer right now. So this is not the most opportune time to be testing the fragrance. It's entirely possible that it has better uh, performance in terms of projection longevity if I would spray a bit heavier. Again, assuming it was winter, but it's not. It's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I'm not gonna spray this on <laughs> seven, eight times and then go out and choke people out. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, take the performance level that I've set here with a little pinch of salt because I haven't been able to wear this in the season that I would typically wear it. So there we go, Armoff Radical Brown for me. This one's going right up toward the top uh, with the best Armoff fragrances that I've smelled. It is really good. Not even as a clone fragrance, just as a fragrance, I really like it. And it's even more interesting to me because it's not just a straight up one-to-one -one clone, it has a little bit of a twist. So that makes it more interesting to me because it's almost like uh, as if I had layered a couple fragrances, something like that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Our Moth Radical Brown, two thumbs up. Stay safe out there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.